I felt two arms on each side of my body, grabbed me underneath my arms, pulled me away off from the main uh, line of students. People were just running in the streets, just clubbing people. I mean, the police were just clubbing the people in the streets and running after them. And some of them were just sitting on the lawns there. At first to see such resistance and then to see outright hostility, brutality, it didn't match the, the, the thing that we were doing. We didn't commit a crime. We were protesting. Who were the Brown Berets? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it was a group of young men and eventually there was a, uh, young girls got involved with us too in, in the movement but it basically was a, it was just a start up during the 60s there was a, just a, a movement going around the, 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 the United States about social justice issues. One of the things we wanted to do is we wanted to join the service club VFW, the American Legions. So when we went and tried to join them uh, and again they were run pretty little white by white dudes and so one of the one of the things they told us after hearing the, hearing our story was well you know you know maybe you guys ought to go start your own and so well, what do you mean by that well why don't you mexican american chicanos whatever you want to call yourself why don't you start your own vfw or your own uh, american legion as we started talking about our thing going on here in st paul we started being able to identify some of the same issues that, were, that they were talking about. We started uh, talking about ourselves, the, our issues with the police, our issues with the, uh, with the school system. Uh, and, and, and the biggest thing I think was, was about thinking, being treated like second class citizens. One of the things that really surfaced for our group here in St. Paul was many, many of our members were veterans, uh, Vietnam veterans. Schooling system in the United States, I don't believe has improved. Uh, and you know, this is something that the Brown Brothers were really fighting for. They really believed in education and education reform. They were uh, one of the first groups to fight for bilingual education. Uh, and even today, our bilingual education system, I don't think uh, has been or is what it, uh, what the dream has always been. I think there's still a lot of misunderstandings uh, around what bilingual education should be. Um, and you know, today we see the same uh, rates, dropout rates, or pushout rates, as I like to call them, uh, because a lot of our students don't get, you know, they don't drop out. They get pushed out of a system of education. Um, and so, you know, 50% of our students are still not graduating, and specifically Minnesota being one of the states with the worst graduation rate for Latinos and Latinas in the whole country. So our education system, unfortunately, hasn't been um, dealt with. I don't think it's an issue that has been um, unfortunately addressed and we're still kind of in the same struggle as back in the 1960s and 70s when the Brown Brothers were fighting for an education system that um, they saw as unequitable and not given enough opportunities to our Latino and Latina youth. When we're thinking about this social movement, it just doesn't happen instantly out of a vacuum, right? These are decades long of events, and I would actually start before 1968, which was the blowouts, I would start in 1848, when we're really thinking about that area once being Mexico, now turning into the United States. And East LA was an important barrio in Los Angeles for Mexican, Mexican American, and Chicana, Chicano communities to live. Um, and so during this time, when the blowouts before they took place, folks were constantly trying to make sure that the students, the young people in their communities had the best education possible. And what we know because of segregation, of redlining, um, these schools tended to be very under-resourced. So they had limited textbooks, if textbooks at all, they had limited um, curriculums that were only telling one type of narrative that often erased their experience as working class people of color, as Chicanas and Chicanos. And so they 
also did not have uh, staff or teachers that reflected who they were, even though they lived in a barrio, they lived in a neighborhood where the majority of people were Mexican or Chicana and Chicano. And so these young students um, took it upon themselves with the help of other community leaders. There were a lot of college students that were around that would sometimes come and help them. But again, right, because we're knowing that all these social movements are occurring. And so in 68, the students in East LA decide to write a list of demands. And one of their teachers is Sal Castro, who uh, no longer is with us, but was very active up until his death, working for education reform. You know, in reality, it's not us that are indicted. It's not us that are up for conspiracy. Because in the long run, the indictment will be on the Board of Education. The convictions will be on the individual members of the Board of Education, principals, vice principals, and counselors who've been completely negligent of their jobs for years and years and years. And it's not only an indictment of the Los Angeles schools, but of all the schools in the Southwest, where Chicanos have gone to for years, and where the schools have failed miserably in teaching them, they will be indicted, and they will be convicted. And in the long run, our kids will win, the Mexican will win, the United States will win, all of us. So Sal Castro uh, and the students organize and I think what we often forget in our narrative when we're looking back at this history is that it was really um, cross-racial. So you had folks that were Filipina, Filipino, you had um, some black folks organizing as well, some white students, working class white students, uh, but again predominantly Chicano and Chicano. So they create a list of demands. Um, and the blowouts of 68 really set them this precedent for 1969 when you have more educational reform happening. And so I really think the 68 blowout, the walkout by the students, um, is a catalyst for all these other types of educational reform. But we have to remember that it's coming out of a long lineage of folks organizing in education. The educational process of Mexican Americans for over 20 years in East Los Angeles and throughout the Southwest has been disrupted by its failure to communicate with the Mexican American. That is the disruption when 57% of the students at Garfield drop out year after year. There has to be a problem. We're not operating in a vacuum. There's social injustice. I think the 68 blowouts were a really excellent way for folks to put pressure on the school system and also their state and local governments to say that we need better education. And they still continue today. Uh, to me, Chicano or Chicana means uh, a going back to the indigenous roots. Uh, historically, we've been labeled uh, in this country, specifically in the United States, uh, by different people. And so Chicano was really a way for the community, the Latino community, uh, and specifically the second uh, generation or first generation Mexican Americans to say and to uh, look at themselves differently uh, and to really acknowledge the indigenous roots that comes with being part of this land. Uh, yes, we're mestizos. Yes, we have part of us is uh, European, uh, European blood that runs through us, but also part of that is indigenous blood. Uh, and I think historically we have gotten away from that and uh, Chicano was really a call and a cry to say that we are indigenous uh, and we have blood in us that is indigenous blood and therefore we need to acknowledge that as well as our European ancestry. The, the philosophy? Well initially it, 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 it was three things. It was to protect, to watch out for your community, again about the police thing going on. The other thing was to observe what was going on and be able to report it and then to serve our community do what we have to do to 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 lift up our people so i think it was until the lion has its own historian the lion hunt is always going to be in favor of the hunter